Okay, so I'm Ash, and welcome to another episode of Girls, Girls, Girls. And today I'm being joined by Marianne. <laughs> so I guess like give just a little brief introduction, like who are you, what do you do? Sure, I'm Marianne Tajo, and uh, right now I have actually a number of roles. I'm a board of director here at Wealth One um, Bank of Canada, which is a um, a new Schedule A, uh, Schedule a uh, bank here in Canada, and uh, I'm a board of director member there, as well as I chair the strategy committee. And uh, I also own my own company, King's Crown, mm -hmm. and uh, I just finished doing a CEO stint here and as an interim CEO and president. Uh, I coach a number of uh, women in leadership. Uh, I actually am teaching a six-part course uh, for women in entrepreneur uh, and entrepreneurialism, and so I do a little bit of everything. I'm very excited to sit here with you. It's really neat. Thank you. So the first question, we're going to start off with something a bit easier. Okay. Um, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh, a superpower. I think if I had a superpower, it would be to de-stress the world. I think there is a lot of stress. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, there isn't a person that I don't speak to that isn't dealing with stress of some kind. And I think, you know, I have a daughter in um, one of your competitors' school, <laughs> and I think that it's it's very uh, prominent even amongst young young women like yourself, right? Um, so if I had a superpower, it would be how to de-stress the world. Yeah, that's amazing, because like, as a grade 11 student right now, everyone around me is super stressed. We're thinking about like university, yeah. what we want to do in the future. Some people, like, know definitely. Yeah. Others are still like, meh. You know, you try it's to hard, right? It's hard when you don't know because you think everybody does, yeah. right? But that's just not the case, right? Yeah. And and you know one of the great things that you guys do have the advantage of? You're going to have multiple careers. <laughs> like in my generation, we kind of pick something and we, we stay in it for life. Whereas I think your generation has, a, there's a real excitement about the fact that you'll most likely have multiple careers. Yeah. So if you don't know it right away, that's okay. So, next question, what is the best and worst part about being a girl? So, I think the best part of being a girl is, first of all, I think that if there was ever a time to be a girl, now is it. I think women are getting into power. I think that there is so much momentum that's taking place um, with women in leadership, the discussions that I'm having at all levels. Um, I, I look at the Me Too woman, uh, movement mm -hmm. and how that is empowering women to have a strong voice. So I think really, it really is, if there is ever a perfect time, this is it. Um, what I love about being a woman is I can, I can show a side of me that most men would never ever dare, and that is to have this human capacity to care and to, to love and to really be genuine and sincere about my emotions and I think more men now are becoming that you know it used to be a sign of weakness but it's no longer so that vulnerability that women can show I think is quite empowering um, so I think that that's the greatest thing about being a girl I think one of the challenges that we have as as girls and women is that we need to learn how to support one another and I don't think we were that great yet. Would you agree? Yeah. Right? It's it's too competitive. It's, I don't know. Definitely. It's just like you feel like you, if there's, you feel like it's a win-lose situation. Like there's only one winner and one loser and if you lose that means that somebody else is winning and that's so wrong. And I think women just need to smarten up and support one another more than ever. Yeah. Especially like being in an all-girls school. It's like all of your, I guess like classmates are like being are girls, yeah. So it's more like like there is like some support from one another, but there's still so limited, like, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I don't get that, right? Like, I mean, it's not that there's only one person that can get it a certain grade, yeah. right? Like, you can all win. And think about how much stronger you'd be if you kind of work together, yeah. right? I know. So I think we women we have to figure this one out. 
Because it actually, it, it goes right through life. I've seen it in my career, right? Um, some of my greatest mentors are not women. They're, they've been men. Yeah. Right? So, um, next is, oh, so what is your definition of success and do you think you've achieved it? So, you know, it's interesting. I thought when I first came out um, out of school and I went into a career, I thought success was all about money and title reaching a certain status and, um, and and what you learn is you gain those things as you work really hard and you get this title and you, and, and you get the status and you feel you feel that you're doing your you know the work that you want to be doing what really success comes down to is a couple of things it's surrounding yourself with people that you enjoy being with so the ability to pick roles and jobs where I work with I enjoy um, the ability to do my best work so you know I'm not perfect at or great at everything but there is a few things that bring me a lot of passion and satisfaction so to be able to do those things and do those really well that brings me um, a lot of sense of success um, I'd say that my family right having a family uh, and understanding how to how to balance between having a family and, and having a career. I mean, those are things that I think women in particular struggle with, so that I think is success. And I also think financial independence, right? I mean, I think that, you know, that might not be something that a lot of people talk about, but when you're able to um, relax around money, I think uh, opens, opens a sense of, of, of comfort and peace within you. So, those are some of, some of the things that I that I think of when I think of success. Yes, it's kind of like what my mom has taught me. You know, yeah. Sophie, she's like, um, I don't want you to work hard, like work yeah. for money. Yeah. But I want you to like enjoy the work that you do. Yeah. And earn money. Yes. While you do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really it's so true. Like when when women and, and ask me, you know, about careers, I always say it's like go follow something you really love to do. Find people that'll pay you to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, good advice from your mom. <laughs> yeah. So, um, who is your biggest inspiration, and if you did have multiple? Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, so I'm, I'm very lucky because I am. I'm a big observer of people. I tell you that some of my biggest inspirations are from everyday people. You know, people that um, defy the odds. You know, I, like I, I look at, um, you know, at King's Crown, we we hire um, a number of you know new people to our country, and uh, I look at how hard they work and, and the odds that they have beat to come here, what they've left behind, the comforts of what they know as being home to come here and start a new life and not know the language and not know the culture and, and bring a family and have responsibility for family. I mean, that that really inspires me. You know, um, a couple of weeks ago I was at church and one of our parishioners celebrated 100 years. And so if I think about what he has seen in 100 years, he's seen world wars, right? Two world wars, he's seen Vietnam, he's, he's, he's just seen a lot, and yet he was one of the most grateful and compassionate men on, you know, talking about how privileged he was to have a life here. So those are the things that inspire me. Um, I think we have lots of inspiration all around us if we really look, look for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, if you could turn back time, is there something you would do differently? Yeah. I tell you the one thing that I would do very differently, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually use this in my life going forward, and that is to worry a lot less. I have spent a lot of time, um, you know, even at your age when I was in high school, um, worrying about all the things that never happened, right? It never happened, but you know what? We're in a, I was in a constant state of worry. You know, I'll tell you, worry is obviously 
um, a manifestation of fear, because you're fearing something, right? And fear is the cheapest room in the house. And I remember reading a philosopher said, I said, fear is the cheapest room in the house. I want to see you do better. And so I think the regret is just wasting too many calories, too many hours worrying about stuff that just never happened. It's, it's pretty neat. I've actually never heard. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that a great, isn't that great, yeah. great, great advice? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Great advice. Cheapest room in the house. I want to see <laughs> you do better. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what is your proudest achievement? You know, I've had, I've had so many, right? Um, I mean, I think, I think, at my age, I'm 57, and I look back on my life at this point, say like most probably people is that my family has been my, my, my most proudest um, because you realize that that's really what we're all about. We're all about an extension of one another and, and so in many ways my family defines me. Um, I'd say professionally it's being able to impact others in a positive way. Um, you know, I've worked with thousands of people. I mean, I, I said SVP of a bank, of one of the big, you know, one of the big banks here in, in Canada, um, the CEO of my mutual fund company, I was chief strategy officer. I mean, I've been very privileged. I've been able to do a lot of a lot of jobs, and those are great. But the proudest is when someone says to me, "I worked with you 15 years ago, and you gave me great advice, or you provided me with an opportunity um, that made all the difference." Those are the things that I, I feel best about. Those are the achievements. It's not about me. It's a lot less about me and the impact that I had on people around me. I think um, that's, that's really nice. And of course, like you're having an impact on me as well. Oh, yeah, that's so sweet. I, I like, like I love what you do. Like that's yeah. super amazing. How you like can influence so many people. And I guess like girls now, I feel like yeah, definitely like our gender equality like that kind of stuff is getting better. Yes. But we also need to be told that you can make a difference. And like you can like influence other people. Actually, think about what's happening in the U.S. Just like just today. So oh, today yeah. they are going to vote on whether Kavanaugh mm -hmm. actually becomes a Supreme Court judge, right? But the movement that's taking place down there from women who are getting up and they're protesting mm -hmm. and they're making their voice heard. I mean, I just get goosebumps, right? So I think that's the excitement that you guys have ahead of you, right? There's like, there's nothing you can't do. Like, you really stand on the women of, that have gone before you to do great things, right? And think that you're even schooling. Like, I, I, when I went to high school, the universities that I thought of were all in my neighborhood. Like, your, yours is the world, right? Yeah. So I do believe that you guys, I, I think this generation is a fabulous generation that can do absolutely anything, like truly do anything. They can make a lot of improvements. For sure, for sure. Was there ever a failure that you had was, that was actually a blessing in disguise? There's actually been a number, and it's interesting because I think we go into life thinking we know all the answers, right? So I had this career mapped out for myself, right? Um, you know, I, I finished school and then I, I wanted, I started in banking and I loved, I, I happened to fall into it and I fell in love with it immediately. And then I basically took a path of what I wanted to do and every step and every year where I was gonna be and what was my title gonna be. And, and it like doesn't work in a straight, in a straight path, right? It has a lot of zigs and zags. And I remember once I was, um, we had just gone through a merger that I was part of, and we had to reapply for our jobs. And one of the things that I applied for was um, a head of sales and marketing, and, uh, and I didn't get it. And I was really quite upset because I felt very qualified for it. But what I got instead was a chief strategy position became accountable for an 18-person board. And that role opened up a whole new world for me that I would never, ever have imagined.
imagined. And it became so much better because someone had the insight and the wisdom to say, no, you've done this job before. We're going to give you something different. So, yeah, I think, you know what? Failure is not necessarily failure. Failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. And uh, so, yeah, that would be one, one of my examples. It's super cool. It's like, um, like for me as well, like in grade nine, I remember planning out all my courses in high yes. school, what I'm going to do, like what I'm going to study in university. And yeah, like the general idea hasn't changed. Like I still want to study like astronomy, something in that. That's not right? Yeah. Oh, that's like, really cool. Yeah, I really like it. So it's like something in that sciencey field, but I realized like I have not followed any of the courses I planned. And you're okay with that, yeah, right? I'm really happy. That is so good. That is that is so important. Because yeah, along the way, I feel like you have to be adaptable as well. Like whatever life throws at you, gotta be like, oh, well, I kind of gotta maneuver around. And that's a life skill, yeah. right? That, like that whole adaptability and and grit. You gotta have a lot of grit, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys talk about grit? My school, oh my gosh, grit is like the only thing they talk about. And I'm telling you, it is so true, right? I mean. We didn't know that that's what it was called, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it's true. It's like you really have because it's it's your ability to keep moving forward, keep moving forward, having the tenacity, right? But then the agility to actually move with the way things are being shaped, right? Having an open mind. It's good. So um, how do you approach a child? So I've learned a lot over the over the years. I'd say originally I'd be this hyperactive person that had to solve everything in the moment, right? It was like, okay, this, this crisis is happening and I'm gonna solve it within the next 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> and so I'd go into this hyper stage of, of thinking and problem solving. And now what I realize is that taking a step back and letting yourself sit and swim with it for a little bit is not a bad thing. And, and these challenges, they come your way for a certain reason. I don't always know the reason. I don't always like it, but I do know that with a still mind, I'm better at it, right? Um, the other thing that I've learned is I always thought that I needed to be the smartest person in the room to solve it. Part of it came with the titles that I had, right? And I learned that, you know what? Having other people help solve that problem with you is always a good thing. So bringing in people that have some, has experience or expertise, or maybe just a sounding board. Um, so those are two ways that I've learned on how to take on a challenge. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, at school, like we're always taught to like work together yeah. and that kind of stuff, and there's always just this one kid off to the side, like trying to figure out everything. Exactly. Else. But yeah, I definitely feel like as a group, like that's like five minds instead of just one. And think about your backgrounds. You, we all have different backgrounds, different yeah. experiences, and how you will approach that problem really is a lot of it is based on the past experiences that you've had. So when you have five different experiences coming towards a problem, what you'll end up doing is it's not any one person's idea, it's the collective idea. You keep building on each other's ideas and you come up with something that no one person would have ever come up with, right? Yeah. yeah. So good for you. So, um, oh. so what advice would you give to young girls? You know, this is one of those questions I could probably spend a day. Right? Because I, you know you learn a lot from your own your own um, experiences, right? And I think some of the stuff that we talked about is important to kind of sit on a little bit. Um, so one of the pieces of advice is to fear, fear a lot, and worry a lot less. Um, and I think girls are notorious for this. For whatever reason, it's part of our DNA, and I'd say it really is a lot of wasted energy, right? So that would be one big piece of advice. The second piece of advice that I would say is important is ask for help. Mm -hmm. And I th some people think help 
is a sign of weakness, but it isn't. It's actually a sign of strength, right? Um, so being able to reach out to different people, different generations, right? Like, I, I, I know that I'm in partnership with my daughter at work, and she's a millennial, and things that she is able to solve for us, um, I just wouldn't have had that capacity or that perspective. Um, so I think, you know, approaching people from different age groups is really, really important. So the 100-year-old parishioner, I mean, having been able to sit with him for 15 minutes, I became a better person for that. So I think that, I think you just have to keep looking for people that can enrich in your life. There's a great song called, I Want You to Dance, I believe it is. And what it is, is that whenever you're given an opportunity, embrace it. Don't overthink it, right? You might have that road map, but when that road map allows you to make a twist and a turn, take it, right? And yeah, those are a few, few of the, my, my ideas as to the advice that I would, that I would have. Um, and I, I'd say don't sweat it out too much, right? Do you sweat it out a lot? Uh, just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get super scared when it gets, like, especially like a bit, okay, I did my SAT in August. Oh. And you know how that is for yeah. high school students. It's a super big thing. But the night before, my mom's just like, relax with me. Like, don't do any more preparation. You've done so much. Like, anything that's, like, done at this point, it's done. Exactly. Just give you people there's actually studies that will tell you that the kids that stay up and to all hours of the morning, you know, like basically cramming on, on a particular exam, do a lot, a lot less effective work than the ones that get the full night's sleep, have a good meal, right, and, and go in with an open mind, right, and a relaxed mind, right. And also uh, to touch on what you said about the um, the preparation. Yes. It's like I feel like girls a lot of the time, like even answering questions in class, like not a big deal, but it's like we always think we have to be 100% correct. Like oh we, my So God. thought out, and then we'll raise our hand, but a lot of the time, we don't, and we miss many opportunities. It's so true, like, you know what, I'll tell you where it plays itself out. You'll see it in, you'll see it in boardrooms, right? Uh, women, you know, I, I happen to be one of very few women in a boardroom, but you know, there's men and, and then there's me, or one or two of us, and, and, and you learn very quickly that you need to speak up and you need to share your opinions. And don't wait for the 100% solution. We're, like, we're perfectionists and life wasn't meant to be perfect, right? But what happens is you pass on what your thought is and then someone mentions it and you're thinking, oh my God, that's my idea, right? And it's, it becomes a brilliant idea around, around the table and you're thinking, why didn't I just speak up, yeah. right? So don't wait for 100%. A lot of times, 80% is good enough. Exactly. Right? There was a study that said, um, like most men are, they, I think they profess an idea when they're even like 60%. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. And yet we're looking for the 100% like the solution. Yeah. So I feel like it's definitely the top line. I think that's, that's really good advice, actually. Yeah, really good advice, I think so. And um, how did you know? Do you know what? It's so interesting. My life took a very different turn. I thought I was going to go in and be um, <laughs> a teacher. <laughs> I really because I, I loved I loved um, spending time with people. And I belonged to many study groups, and I really enjoyed just sharing, learning. Um, and what I did was I went in, uh, into a daycare over a summer, and I volunteered, and I quickly learned that. I just could not do that. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is the hardest job in the world. I don't think it's for me. Um, but I fell into banking, and, um, and when I fell into it, I, I loved it, and I have a tremendous amount of passion for it. And so I, uh, I thankfully, am just one of those people that to this day, I pinch myself and feel really grateful that I can work in this industry. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. When I was younger, like around three-ish, five, I wanted to be an astronaut because oh. I like loved like I've loved space ever since like a child because um, I would like my grandma would read me these like little encyclopedias of like just like blurbs about our solar system and stuff. I 
was like, oh my gosh, there's floating like circular things in, like, in the sky, that's so cool. But like later, um, I learned that, like A, I'm a bit too short to be an astronaut. I can't safely go up there without my spine like collapsing. But um, also, it's like, it's not really for me because it does require a lot of like physical, you know, that kind of stuff. And I, like my plan now is, like even if I can't go up to space, I can still help people go up to space, you know, to be one of those um, mission control. Unbelievable. You have to, uh, TIFF has just finished here in Toronto, as you um, may know, in September. And um, one of the movies that was, that was, that premiered here in Toronto is the Neil Armstrong story. You have to watch the movie. It's with Ryan Gosling. And, and what was really cool at TIFF was the two, the two sons of Neil Armstrong came to the event and they oh. talked about yeah, they talked about what it was like to be part of a family where their dad was one of the very first to, to, to be on the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got you had to watch that movie. Yeah. It was so inspiring. I'll check it. Yeah, yeah. Hidden yeah. Figures was amazing too. Oh my God, another great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So that's all from me. Is there anything else you want to share? I just think it's so cool what you're doing and I think that um, I, I think you guys are really privileged, I really do, and I, I would just take up every opportunity, and you know what, don't worry if you fall and scrape your knees, that's what life is all about, you just get back up and, and have grit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.